Abyssinia, Piconese, by Piconese and Salamiri, particularly in this uh, Godemibia Hara, it is for women Redansians. So most of you, uh, those of you who are seated on the chair are Redansians, and those of you who are on the floor will become Redansians. <laughs> I got the invitation not from Barbara, but I got the invitation from Ananda Jyoti, Venerable Ananda Jyoti. He said that, you know, invite you to come for this opening of uh, Godami Vihara. I forgot the talk I had with Barbara. I, I didn't connect. And I said, oh, this Godami Vihara must be for women. I must come. <laughs> Just simply that, you know, I accepted the invitation. Only later on did I learned that it's connected with Barbara's work. And of course, many of you, and Lysodhya and Professor Lysodhya here was ordained with me for nine days. And that's where I remember suddenly, you know, with that, that temporary ordination that I was discussing with her. I got the idea of giving temporary ordination from Venerable Santini. This is very important that the ordained sisters are connected. Very important. Such support that we need. And this is support group, you know, support network of uh, Pikudis. So, very happy to be here. I bring you lots of good energy so that the center will prosper very quickly. Uh, after my ordination, it took me 11 years to be where I am now, walking the street for Pintabad alone. But now we have 40 people in the country. And uh, last month, it was 6th of April, we actually had 78 seminaries and people in my place. So that is a long passage that we have taken. But it took only 11 years. From your, for your country, it will take only half. <laughs> Why so? Because when I started, I started literally alone. I did not have this committee. I did not have people talking together, brainstorming together, coming up with goals, with how to get to, to where you are. So, you know, I was so happy reading in details of what Barbara and her group is doing. With your support, this will take only half of the time. So, my presentation this is the first time I'm making PowerPoint for you. So, if it, look, if it does not look right, then I take the responsibility. I talk about Mahapadabhati, Mahatheri. She was Mahatheri. To be Terry, you need 10 years already. You must be ordained for 10 years. Maha Terry, 20 years up. So, uh, I see her as the founder of the Pikuni Sangha for America. Now, I take you way back for her family. The Sakya, the Buddha's family, started from Okakaraja, ancestor of the Sakyas. They branched out. Okakaraja had nine children, five daughters, and four sons. And then, I think, the queen, his wife died. So he got married again to a younger wife. Now this younger wife, when all the nine children were grown, a little baby was born. So the father was really involved with, you know, very cute, taking care of this baby. And then one day, he was so happy with, with his son, with his young son. And he said that, whatever you ask, I will give you. So the queen took that opportunity to ask for the throne what to do with the nine children all grown up. So the nine children had to leave the town and start their own kingdom. The nine children started getting married between themselves, so they made four couples and one elder sister. They had to move out of And they started Kabilavastu. Now Kabilavastu, your family with the name? Yes. Kabilavastu. So they were the one, they were the ancestors of the one who started Kabilavastu. And now I take you many hundred years, the time when in Kapilavastu you have the eldest son, his name was Sudodana. Sudodana became the, the Buddha's father, as you know, on this side. And uh, on the other side, both of them are still belonging to Sakya family. The other side, they stay at Devadaha. Devadaha and uh, on the Devadaha side, the youngest, two youngest daughters, Maya and Pajavati. Both of them go to me, right? Both, both of them go to me. They got married to Sutodina. So they moved from Devadaha to Kabilavastu. 
that's how we started the Buddha story, Dhammaleka. So this is how uh, King Sudodana and his two, young, two, two wives, the two sisters came together. Uh, uh, the artist made this picture a bit uh, not realistic. I mean, the king should be younger than that. <laughs> that looked more like a father <laughs> and daughters. <laughs> Forgive the artist. <laughs> so, uh, Maya, Maya in the red sari, and the purple one is Pajavati. Okay. Now, the oldest record we have in Lumini is a stone, half on stone, in red stone. But the surface was gone. But you always see that was the first, I think, first evidence of Pajapati, of Pajapati holding on to her sister when her sister was giving birth to the baby, who later on became the Buddha, called Kaurubhika. That's how it was. Uh, we should visualize the one in blue is Pajapati helping the, her elder sister giving birth to the little baby. Last, last two years ago, it was a big, uh, big war in my country. Buddhist people believe that this baby Buddha should be walking, taking seven steps on the lotus. And other people say, oh, they don't believe in that. And they started quarreling. You know? <laughs> if you don't believe that the baby Buddha actually took the seven steps on the lotus, then you are not good Buddhist. <laughs> so those who insisted, on the actual fact that the Buddha actually took the seven steps. I said, whether the Buddha walked the seven steps, having the lotus coming up, boop, boop, like that, or not, it's not our concern. Really not our concern. You know, that's a miraculous part that maybe he actually performed, maybe he did not perform. That does not make us less Buddhist. Yeah? So if you cannot sift the God from the call, then it's very difficult. So Malaysia, as a new nation, we you are know, having more and more Buddhists, more and more of you becoming Buddhists. We must be able to distinguish between what is the surface and what is the core. They go together. You know, the tree without the car is a dead tree, right? So it goes together. But you must know which one is the core, which one is the essence, more than just clinging on to the surface. And Brahma, Brahma and uh, Brahma and Indra. Indra always come in green. And uh, Brahma, Brahma, the four-faced Brahma. You know, many Malaysians coming to Thailand to pay respect to the four-faced Brahma. Of course, they expect richness. Now, <laughs> Tommy. Now, the Buddha came to visit his parents twice. This is the second time when the king was already taken very seriously ill. So the, the Buddha actually uh, gave Dharma talk so that his father, King Subodhana, became enlightened. He was Arahat. He was Arahat. And look, look at the wife, uh, Ajabadi, Ajabadi Kodini, his, the, the Buddha's aunt and stepmother, became Sodhavana. He entered the first dream of enlightenment. Now, when King, King Sutodhana passed away, she was now free, free to be, to be ordained. So she approached the Buddha. She approached the Buddha uh, that she would like to go forth. The Buddha said no. He didn't give reason why he said no. But we got lots of negative interpretation to say that the Buddha never wanted to, women to join the order. Who said that? Do you have a proof? The Buddha, when he was enlightened, he already established fourfold Buddhists. Fourfold Buddhists are the bhikkhus. Bhikkhus is Upasika, Upasika, and Upasika. That was before she was. She asked him for ordination. So the Buddha already had an idea of the establishment of the Buddhism must be on the fourfold Buddhists. What are the responsibilities? Now I can argue. I can. Mean, the responsibilities of threefold. Number one, we have to study. The Buddha's teaching, Dharma Vinaya, we have to put it into practice. Buddhism is never a religion of the text. Buddhism is about the teaching and about practice. And number three, very important, should there be any outsider speaking anything against the true teaching, we must be able to defend. Can we do that? <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm very sure because we don't know what is the real teaching yet. Venerable, please tell me. <laughs> now, she had made a decision. Venerable, uh, the, the, the Queen, Pajabi, she already made a decision. So together with the 500 Sakyanis, Sakyani mean the princess, the women of Sakya clan, they went forth, shaved their hair, put on the robe. They would ask the police to come after them. Nobody gave them ordination. Right? Nobody gave them ordination. The ordination comes from their heart. They have their head put on the rope and they walked towards the direction that the Buddha went. The Buddha left from the Buddha two way sari. Some they walked two way sari. When everybody is making a great historical event in July, no? In July, there will be another ordination for Pitulis in Vaisali and Venerable Lefa is organizing it. Yes. Look at how they went to Vaisali. They really walk in the forest, you know. They had, there was no clear road for them. So they had to really clean up, clean up the path in order to walk to Vaisali. By the time they got to their side, their feet were bleeding, the roads were torn, they were really in such a difficult situation. <clears throat> now, the Buddha was staying inside. They, could, they did not dare to enter because they already asked the Buddha three times. And the Buddha said, no, go to me, you do not ask that. Just like that. But he didn't give the reason. So they were weeping and crying, didn't know what was happening to their future outside. Pahitwara road gate means outside the main gate. So they were waiting. And Ananda was so kind. Ananda was the Buddha's attendant, and Ananda was the Buddha's cousin. And because Ananda was the Buddha's cousin, Ananda was also her nephew. Was her nephew. So uh, Ananda came out and asked what can you do? He learned from them that they wanted to become the Buddhists, they wanted to join the order. So Ananda went, Ananda was like a middle man, you know, went back to the Buddha, asked the Buddha, the venerable <clears throat> Ajavati is waiting outside looking for ordination and you are not giving her ordination. So the Buddha said, Ananda, don't ask, don't ask. So Ananda went, Pariyayena, Pariyayena means going the other way. Asking whether you are not giving them permission, is it because they cannot be enlightened? This is very important. Is it because they cannot be enlightened? The Buddha said, no, Ananda. Women can be enlightened. Women can enter the first dream, Sodabhatmi, Sodabhana, Sakathakami, Anakami, Arahat, Satchikatundi. They can see it with their own eyes. How beautiful. How beautiful. This is golden phrase in Buddhism. As the Buddha was the very first one to come out very clearly to accept that women can be enlightened, not anyone before his time. You know, of course, at that time they were Jain. Jain also had women ordained, but in Buddhism, when women come out into the Sangha, they're very established, very established. So uh, that was um, that was the first time that she was actually accepted. Ananda went back again. Then Ananda learned the eight Garudama, eight important rules from, from the Buddha. He learned, remembered by heart, and then she, he came out to her, by asking her whether will you be will you be willing to take this eight precepts? If you're willing to take the eight precepts. She said she was very happy to take the eight precepts. Just like a young lady taking bath, coming from bath, and how she would like to decorate her hair with this mala, with the garland. In the same way, I'm willing to take the eight precepts on her head. So she took the eight precepts. Ananda came back to the Buddha and told the Buddha that Venerable Pajapati Kodumi already accepted the eight precepts. Then the Buddha was supposed to say, ah, this is Ananda. The Buddha was supposed to say, the Buddha was supposed to say, number one, the sasana, which will last for 1,000 years, will now last only for 500 years because of the acceptance of women. Yeah. Ah, uh, this one, this one then, second paragraph, first paragraph, by, jo by women joining the order, 
Sasana will last from 1,000 years, it will be less than 500 years. Second paragraph, just like a family with too many women, the robber can break in easily. Look how the robber will come in and how the women were so scared. The third paragraph, uh, he compared it to the wheat field when the in uh, insects get into the wheat field, how the wheat become less. You know, the fourth paragraph talk about sugar cane. How sugar cane is being affected by insects, and it will give less yield. Uh, it causes the kind of disease that sugar cane become red inside. So when sugar come, sugar cane become red inside, there's less juice. Four paragraph. The last paragraph. The last paragraph. The Buddha said. Just like a man, knowing that I will be flat, therefore I build the dam. And this building the dam is giving the eight Guru Dharma to the Pikmins to take for life. So which means that the four paragraph is now being cancelled because he already built the dam to protect Buddhism. But you keep hearing from many people to say that, oh, women joining the order, we will make sasana shorter. Oh, women joining the order is this, is this. But read the text and you will find that the text is very clear. People have been quoting, quoting what you call uh, out of context. Quoting out of context. So then we get this misconception. Go back to the text, read the text properly, and you will see that the text did not say what you say. Yes? So for, for this center, for this Godini Center, very important that we go back and read the text. Maybe once a week, we read the text together, particularly those aspects that has been uh, causing much negative energy among the women and among among the supporters, among the true Buddhists. So the Bhikkhunis and the Bhikkhus work side by side for the propagation of Buddhism in the Buddhist time and lasted more than thousand years. When Buddhism disappeared from India, it was not the Bhikkhunis who disappeared first. They disappeared together with the invasion of the Muslim, the Turk Muslim coming in 12th century AD. Of course, Mahabharata was playing a very important role as the mother of Bhikkhunis. That's why my name is Dhamma Nanda, because Nanda is her daughter. Her daughter. So taking this, this uh, Lifestyle, I consider myself the daughter of Pajapati Kodi. Now, this is very beautiful. When she decided to pass away, she was supposed to be 120. That's not fit in the study very well because the Buddha passed away when he was 80. Yeah? But the time then, and she was supposed to be 20 years older than him. There is some discrepancy here. That's not quite fit in my head, doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> she was supposed to be 120 and then she decided to pass away now. So she went and paid respect to the Buddha, asking him to take leave. The beautiful message was Rahula Ananda, Rahula grandson, uh, Ananda nephew, Nanda, Nanda son. They were there. And she turned around to them and asked them, my grandchildren, my, my grandchildren, my sons, please take care of the Buddha. I'm taking leave now. That's a very beautiful passage. And in one of the latest work, the book is called Mahapajapati, written by a, written by an Indian married to a Japanese. She gave this, uh, this vision of the Buddha was actually carrying her body, you know, in front, in front, it was uh, Rahula Ananda, and behind the Buddha and Ananda carrying the Buddha's copy. Very beautiful, very beautiful book. Tameka. Tameka. Now, I just wanted to show you the Tameka. the uh, Mahapajapati statue. This is in my temple, cast it in my time about 10 years ago. Uh, we took we had the, what you call, sample from King Rama the third period, about a hundred years ago. King Rama the third, his daughter died. So he built this temple only for women. And it was housed 
53 Pikumin statue, uh, just about 60 centimeters tall, and ca tin cassette, cassette from tin, in different position. So this one was made after that. And Venerable Dhamma, Venerable Dhamma, Dhamma Loga, Venerable Dhamma Loga, from Sri Lanka, he saw that it was in wax, and he asked to put on this long sleeve. He said, so that it would be related to us. So the statue actually had long sleeve. Now we have 13 Parakatevis as, uh, as giving praise by the Buddha in the Buddha's time. In our temple, we have all the 13 of them. Um, in fact, I brought you a CD. I will go back to my place during lunch break and bring you the CD I forgot. Maybe you, you drive for me. And, and, and get the CD, it should be sufficient. I think I brought about 30, 30 copies. So we humbly pay respect to Mahapajapati Kojumi and still, still draw inspiration from her work, her lifestyle that she set forth for us. With deep respect and gratitude to Mahapajapati, we follow close to her footsteps in our practice, sound and sound. 